Greetings, I am Flex, and I will be your advisor. As the newly elected leader of the world governance, you have the power to change our planet. Be aware that our current lifestyle is seriously threatening the ecosystem, so act responsible. Good luck, I will be there for you, and if you need me, just say, Hi Flex! Our planet really is under threat. People need to sacrifice their own comfort to allow the ecosystem to have a future. Let's see what the result would be if we do nothing. As you can see, within 40 years we will witness dramatic changes in terms of agricultural land expansion, freshwater depletion and emission rise. This translates in a rapid decrease in the final planet score. That's right, that does not look good at all. I think we should start from radical changes on our everyday life. For example, on what we eat. I try to do my part only eating vegan. I wonder what the planet would look like if everybody ate the way I do. Wow, it seems like in China the use of land for agriculture would be particularly efficient. I wonder what they eat over there. Hi Flex, what does the diet mostly consist of in China? The diet in China mostly consists of cereals such as rice and noodles. Interesting! I bet we would have even better results if everybody ate exclusively cereals. Well, the fresh water would be depleted much less over time, and so the expansion of land for agriculture would slow down. Looks like a solution for a sustainable growth of population. Notice that the human development score has significantly decreased due to the food availability factor. That's right, it's probably a too extreme solution. Who would like to only eat cereals? Maybe a vegetarian diet would be a better compromise for people to enjoy their food. Although, I do want to keep the planet score as low as it is. What if, beside a vegetarian diet, we genetically modified our food so that the same amount takes up less land to be produced? Okay, this combination allowed the planet score to stay low. However, the emissions factor can definitely be optimized. I believe that trying to pollute less is needed just as much as capturing the emissions present. Therefore, I'm curious to see if a much cleaner means of transport like the Hyperloop would do it. Nice. This helped the emissions to go down and the planet score slightly improved. Notice that the human development score has decreased due to the connectivity factor. I see. The Hyperloop creates a very centralized system affecting the area far from the Hyperloop stations. Perhaps the combination of this with other means of transport would improve the scores. Let's try to simulate a system using both Hyperloop and cars. Good, that definitely improved the connectivity factor and therefore the human development score. The emissions, however, can still be optimized. I'm going to try something more extreme, like implementing the carbon capture technology. Well, that clearly made a big difference. It looks like carbon capture would be an efficient solution to absorb pollution. The planet score became higher as well. Notice that the human development score has decreased due to the GDP per capita factor. Good point. That is effective, but apparently very expensive too. Greening the barren lands could be a cheaper solution. I will try a combination of the two, making a smaller investment on the carbon capture technology and testing the barren lands greening at the same time. Let's see what the outcome will be. Nice! The GDP looks higher in the GDP globe, and the land use one shows the desert turning into forest. 
This made the GDP per capita and biodiversity factor improving. The emissions haven't lowered drastically, but they are now rather low thanks to the combination with the other solutions. Congratulations! The planet presents now values much closer to a healthy balance.